is going on, you know, too official, boy, Sam, too official, never unofficial, you feel what I'm saying, today, 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 I got a special video for you guys, but if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and look, don't forget, turn on those post notifications, because YouTube is tripping, we're on a road to 1,000 subscribers, thank you guys for subscribing to the channel, really do appreciate every single one of y'all, man. For real, today, today, today is informational Sundays, as you can see. Um, I got two videos for you today. Um, so, we're going to be reacting to top 10 richest people in history. You know what I'm saying? I should be in this list. If I'm not in this list, I'm going to get tight. Let's get right to it. I was joking. I was joking about the way I was joking. Hey, 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 hey. I don't have my headphones. Gotta get it. <sighs> Gotta get my headphones. All right. Hold on, real quick. Let's see, we'll do everything live around here. You know what I'm talking about. We'll do everything live, so yeah. Let's get right to it. Every year we see lists of the richest people in the world, usually businessmen who own shares in large companies that they founded. But have you ever wondered what an all-time list of the richest people might look like if you were to include all the emperors and pioneers and conquerors together with the investors in technology? I should, but I know that Solomon in the Bible is literally number one. He has to be number one in this list. Solomon, yeah, he's like the richest, bro. Nobody can, bro, the richest of the richest. Solomon should be number one geeks of today. Yes, it is indeed challenging to compare wealth across eras and geographies, but it's a task that has been attempted by leading historians and economists and adjusted for inflation. In today's episode of Top Trending, we bring to you this list of the top 15 richest people in history. At number 15 on our list is Henry Ford, the captain of the American car industry and the business magnate who has made mass production of automobiles possible. The Ford Motor Company founded by him made cars that were for the first time affordable to the middle class, converting them into the practical mode of conveyance and revolutionizing transportation. And as the owner of the company, Henry Ford became one of the richest and most famous people in the world. When he died, his net worth was over $200 billion in today's terms, and most of this was left to the Ford Foundation. A story of rags to riches. Cornelius Vanderbilt made his fortune in the railroad and shipping business in 19th century America. He used to work with his father who operated a cargo boat between Staten Island and Manhattan in New York. In the 1820s, he started his own steamship business operating in New York, and in the 1850s, he entered the railroad business. He was known for his shrewd and aggressive business style. At the peak of his wealth, he would have been worth $202 billion in today's money. Unlike later business magnates, he did not set up a foundation or give much to charity, other than a million dollars seed money to establish the Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. The family no longer controls any businesses, and the fortune amassed by Cornelius Vanderbilt is no longer in the family. Libyan revolutionary and political leader of more than 42 years, Muammar Gaddafi is rumored to have been worth $200 billion at the time of his violent overthrow and death in 2011, which is over and worth $200 billion at the time of his... 42 years. Muammar Gaddafi is rumored to have been worth $200 billion at the time of his violent overthrow and death in 2011, which is over $212 billion in today's terms. During his decades-long reign, he had as good as private control over Libya's rich oil fields and their earnings. This wealth was secreted away in several bank accounts, real estate, and other investments around the world. At the beginning of the Libyan conflict, the U.S. government found $37 billion in the United States. $30 billion was found in assets across U.K., Germany, France, and Italy. Even today, it is believed that much of the cash stashed away by him remains unfound. At number 12 on our list is William the Conqueror, the first Norman king of England, ruling from 1066 after defeating King Harold in the Battle of Hastings, son of the Duke of Normandy, Robert I, and a mistress named Herleva. He was also known as William the Bastard. He succeeded his father as the Duke of Normandy, and it is said he was promised the throne of England by King Edward. When Edward declared Harold the king on his deathbed, William declared war. The plunder from the conquest and land grabs makes William the Conqueror's wealth estimated at $228 billion in today's terms. 
a German merchant, mining entrepreneur, and banker from the 16th century. Jakob Fugger amassed huge wealth and power during his lifetime, amounting to $277 billion at the peak of his fortune. The foundation of the wealth was laid through the textile trade with Italy, but grew manifold with the start of banking operations with the royal family of Austria and the administrative apparatus of the Holy See. At one point, he had a monopolistic hold on the copper trade in Europe. With his enormous wealth, Jakob Fugger influenced much of European history by funding the marriages that saw the Austrian House of Habsburg gain control of Spain, Bohemia, and Hungary, and ensuring the election of Charles V as the next Holy Roman Emperor. On his death, his business and wealth passed on to his nephew, Anton Fugger. At number 10 on our list of the richest people in the world is His Exalted Highness Nawab Simir Osman Ali Khan Siddiqui by Afandi Asaf Jah VII, the last Nizam of Hyderabad, a princely state in India that became a part of the Republic of India in 1948. In 1937, he featured on the cover of Time magazine as the richest man. The richest man. in the world. His wealth was massed on mining royalties and land revenue. Darabad was the only supplier of diamonds globally in the 18th century. His net worth was estimated at $2 billion in the early 1940s, 2% of the U.S. economy at that time. In today's terms, that's about $230 billion. The Jacob Diamond, a 124-carat diamond worth more than $40 million, was part of the Nizam's jewelry collection and used by him as a paperweight. Mirazman Ali Khan was considered a miser for the way he dressed, but almost all the major public buildings and institutions in Hyderabad were built during his reign. The Osmania University, the General Hospital, the High Court, the Observatory, to name a few. After Hyderabad's accession to India, most of his wealth was taken over by the Indian government, including the Nizam jewelry collection. But even after that, he was still widely considered South Asia's richest man till his death in 1967. He is said to have fathered 149 children, and what remains of his wealth is now being litigated by an increasing number of claimants. 140, mm, 140 some children, imagine. At number 9 on our list is the last Tsar of Russia, Nikolai Alexandrovich Romanov, who was worth $300 billion in today's terms. He ruled from 1894 till he abdicated the throne in 1917. The Romanov family had ruled Russia for over 300 years and had amassed a lot of wealth and property in that time, only to be increased by Tsar Nicholas II. The family's jewelry collection was estimated to be worth 160 million rubles. The Tsar owned multi-millions in the noble bank and the railroads. Millions were transferred to German banks after a failed revolution. The Empress had collected over 600 diamonds. The family owned villas and palaces in several European countries, and many more properties in Russia. All of this wealth was seized in the Bolshevik Revolution, and the Tsar, along with his wife, children, and loyal members of staff, were murdered in 1918. Oh, yeah, Industrialist and philanthropist Andrew Carnegie was born in Scotland, the son of a handloom weaver. At the age of 13, he moved to America and worked a series of telegraph and railroad jobs. Yeah. While still working, he started investing in oil, infrastructure. Yeah, he was doing oil. Yeah, I forgot. That's exactly when that the industrial structure and st industrial revolution deal eventually setting up the Carnegie Steel Company vertical integration of raw material supplies and reduction in costs of steel production using the Bessemer process made his business wildly successful. Yeah, the steel company was, you know, what I'm saying it was it, that era of the industrial revolution. For those who doesn't know, he sold his steel business, which eventually became U.S. Steel Corporation, so as to retire. European. Tire for a whopping $480 million in 1901. At his peak wealth, he was worth $337 billion in today's money. After his retirement, he focused on philanthropy, giving away 90% of his wealth to different causes, primarily education, world peace, libraries, and scientific research. Rockefeller, this dude was literally a charge of a bank. He was doing banking. Widely regarded as the wealthiest American of all time and the richest person in modern history, John D. Rockefeller had a peak net worth of about $367 billion in today's money. He made his money in oil refining, and the Standard Oil Trust that he founded controlled 90% of the supply of oil. My fault, bro. I got, I got a mistake. Look, you know what I'm saying? Quarantine mess. I got a mistakenly biased. You know what I'm saying? Rockefeller and some somebody else. Some somebody did bank, you know.
on the United States. He revolutionized the American oil industry through his strategies of integration, transportation, and marketing. And his company became so big that in 1911, the Supreme Court ruled that it was in violation of antitrust laws and split it into 34 different companies. Rockefeller received proportionate shares in these new companies. And over the next 10 years, this proved immensely profitable as their net worth rose fivefold. He used his unprecedented wealth to pioneer the modern system of philanthropy, creating foundations that even today have a major impact on medicine, education, and scientific research. Masa Musa, that's the, oh my goodness, he was one of the richest people on earth. Yes, I think it was a Ghana, yeah, Ghana. With an estimated net worth of $415 billion, Mansa Musa I, Emperor of Mali and King of Timbuktu, is at number six on this list. He controlled the Mali Empire and the Ghana Empire, and conquered much of West Africa during his reign in the 14th century. One of his titles was Lord of the Mines, and he owned more than half the world's supply of gold. But gold, everything, bro. At a time that there was a hugely increasing demand for the commodity, and he also controlled key trade routes between the West African coasts and the Mediterranean. He built schools, mosques, and even a major university, all of which became his legacy many years after he died, and some of which are still standing now. He is also known for a fabulous pilgrimage he once made to Mecca, in a caravan stretching as far as the eye could see, with an entourage of tens of thousands of people, donating and spending so much money when they stopped in Here's $100,000. Wait, I can give you this 100 grand or I can teach you how to make this every single month. You see, this is exactly what I made in my business from one. Cairo that it caused instant inflation and it took years for the local economy to recover from the shock. King Solomon, what? Are you serious? No. No, 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 no. 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 You're joking. You are no, 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 no. King Solomon is not number five. He's number freaking one. Who the freak is richer than me? Bro, who the freak is richer than King Solomon? Bro, King Solomon was freaking. Bro, what? Bro, he's literally the richest people, rich, richest man on earth. He's not even alive. He's the richest man on earth. Bro, he had freaking a thousand wives. Oh my goodness, bro. Nah, bro. I don't believe it. This this is inaccurate. At number five on our list of the richest people in history is the biblical legend King Solomon, who ruled Israel for 40 years from 370 to 331 BC. He is known to have been extremely wise and fabulously wealthy, with the empire reaching its heights of splendor during his reign. He is said to have received a yearly tribute of 666 gold talents, which is approximately 86,000 pounds of gold every year. This, in addition to his income from taxation and trade, makes his net worth over 2.2 tr- Are you kidding me, bro? Who beats 2.2 trillion? We're talking about trillion now. Trillion. Bro, freak the bill. Who is over 2.2 trillion? If we, bro, who the freak are you? No, no, King Solomon should be number one, bro. I'm so curious of who, who's, who's number one now? Who's trillion dollars. He used his wealth to create many building projects, including the first temple in Jerusalem, which is known as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So Augustus Caesar is, oh my goodness, bro. This is so biased. The heir of Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar was the master of political and military intrigue, and in 27 BC appointed himself the first emperor of the Roman Empire. This gave him sole control over imperial Rome, and a personal fortune equivalent to one-fifth of the entire economy, which made his net worth an estimated $4.63 trillion. He is said to have per- Yeah, yeah. Now I see why. You feel me? A Caesar, he had, he had um, coins. His his face was in coins. Back then, not now. Back then, you know, his face was in coins. But bro, I don't I don't get it, bro. Freaking Solomon should be number one, bro. He should be number one personally owned the entire country of Egypt. He established a system that created and maintained the peace of the Romans for over 200 years, but in his final years he struggled to find peace, troubled by the death of his beloved grandsons who he had hoped to appoint as heirs, as well as military defeats and a troubled economy. What? 
Number three on this list of the richest people in history is Emperor Akbar I, the ruler of the Mughal Empire between 1556 and 1605. He was a great military general, and during his reign of the Mughals expanded their empire to include almost the entire Indian subcontinent. This made him the controller of almost 25% of the world's GDP, a staggering $21 trillion in today's terms. Akbar was also an administrative genius, and he was able to exercise power and influence over this vast empire because he created a centralized system of administration that ensured military, political, cultural, and economic dominance. He lived a lavish lifestyle, establishing for himself and his family three courts in Delhi, Agra, and Fadipur Sikri. He was also a great patron of the arts, creating a massive library as well as funding music, paintings, and architecture. He even tried creating his own religion that was a blend of Islam and Hinduism. At number two on our list of the richest people in history is a Chinese emperor of the 11th century AD, Emperor Shenzong of Song. He had an estimated net worth of over $30 trillion, ruling over an estimated 30% of the world's GDP during the peaceful prosperity and primary abundance eras. A new economic and social program was instituted, including low-rate loans to peasants, corrected land surveys to ensure that tax collections were increased, and a program of purchasing manufactured specialties in one region and selling them in another. All of these contributed greatly to increasing government revenues, but at the same time, Time, the regime of Emperor Shenzong is also credited with implementing policies to help poor peasants as well as the unemployed, which is seen as being a forerunner to the modern welfare state. Shingiz Khan. Shingiz Khan. Are you serious? I'm, I'm literally curious of what, how much did he make? You feel me? Because that 2.2 trillion from King Solomon, I don't even think it's freaking accurate. You feel me? Nah, bro. You feel me? Bro, you can read in the freaking Bible. It says that he was the richest man on earth. No man can go to his level. You feel me? This, this Bro, this has to be biased. No, not against these people on the list that's literally above King Solomon, but literally King Solomon is number one. I don't, I don't buy it. You know, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. It's supposed to be number one. King Solomon, well, he's supposed to be number one, bro. I don't buy it. This is this this list has to be inaccurate, bro. It's so inaccurate. Two point two trillion from King Nah, bro. I don't I don't believe it. Bro, a thousand freaking wives. Are you serious? A thousand. The fearsome emperor and founder of the Mughal Empire is at the top of our list of the 15 richest people in his... The numbers that he's doing, I don't even think is true. I don't even think it's real. This is supposed to be the accurate number of today's modern money. I don't think it's real. History, with a net worth amounting to hundreds of trillions of dollars. Between 1206 and 1227, he led his armies on a brutal assault of all of his neighboring kingdoms, winning all of his battles. In all, he conquered over 12 million square miles of territory, controlling most of Central Asia and China. He usually slaughtered on a large scale the local inhabitants of the kingdoms that he conquered, and took over all their wealth and possessions, which combined with the value of the land makes him by far the richest person in history. That's our list of the top 15 richest people in history. Do you agree? Disagree? Are there any other people yeah, you think should be on our list? Let us know in the comments section. We love hearing from you. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like the video, share with friends, and, and it took years for the local economy to recover from the shock. This man should be number one. Not gonna lie to you, man. I don't believe the numbers he said about King Solomon. I do not believe that's how much he made. The man is literally the richest man, bro. Do your freaking research, bro. He is the richest man on the freaking planet that would never, but nobody would never, never become at his level. You feel me? Let me, bro, I, I feel like, let me see if I can find it, man. Let me see if I can find it for you guys, man. In case you guys are probably wondering what the freak is he talking about. Let's see if I can find it, bro. Cause this is this is good as like man. Bro, 
she had freaking 18,125 kilograms of gold. Not freaking money. Gold. Gold transferred to boat. No. It's about 18,000. 125 kilograms of gold. Are you freaking serious? You guys might be saying, bro, no. Gold is literally... Gold is money. Um, okay. But 18... Do your, do your freaking research. 18,000. Gold. Do you know that people are literally doing mining? They are mining for gold right now. People are actually mining for gold. Do had 18,000 kilograms. And gold is really heavy, bro. You guys haven't touched real gold yet. Do you think those freaking jewelries are... Bro, real jewelry might be gold, but you haven't touched real gold. Not saying I have, but... You know, bro, touch real gold and you see how heavy that is. One gold is literally heavy. Let me know, bro. Nah, bro, because I don't believe this list. I don't believe this list. I got to freaking tell you guys... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I don't believe it, bro. I don't believe it, bro. I'm trying to see if I can do my research real quick. That's that's what most of you, the people on this list, need to, you needed to do deeper research, bro. 1,000 grams of gold mass. So you convert that to, so from grams to kilograms is one. So one kilogram equals one gold. But if you convert that to grams, it's 1,000 gram of gold. And that's really heavy, you feel me? So he had 18,000 kilograms. So that's 18, 180,000 grams. You know what I'm saying? 180,000 grams of freaking gold. Man, if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, man. Give me a thumbs up. Share this with your friends. And don't forget to turn on those post notifications because YouTube is tripping. We're on a road to 1,000. Thank you guys for subscribing. Here's your boy Sam's official never for show, man. Stay safe, stay positive, and most of all, stay healthy. If you haven't brought your Bible, go ahead and buy your Bible. Pray every single day, and don't forget to trust and believe in God, man. It's been your boy Sam's official never unofficial. And I'll catch you in the next one, bro. King Solomon and number five. That is disrespectful. I'm out.